With a crossbow? And the coach of the champions. Yep. He coaches Cejudo, the Pitbull brothers. Yep. All of them crackers. Oh, wow. We'll get a little um, update on the ground from the streets of Arizona. Man, you're excited, though, about that crossbow. You yeah. were like, bro, you were like deep into it before. I don't even know if this episode was going to happen. If you had gotten it done early enough and gone outside. Yeah, what do you need, though? What is the wrestler for My computer? Yeah. Wrestle 4 9, capital W. What? Wrestle 4 9. Coach. Holy. What up? My man, look at this guy. If you hey. go if you go long ways, you can get both of us. Okay. So like this? Yep. Oof. Look at him dripping squagoo. Damn. <laughs> Damn. You know, we're trying to get uh you over there, you got a hunting bow, but I am ahead of you. He already <laughs> shot the he already well, shot the Well the, the thing animal. is is I just want everybody to know. If they come, you know, to the menace headquarters looking to loot, they're gonna have a problem. All right, because I got a crossbow. Ah, I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? I'm just putting it out there, just a slight <laughs> flex. So if people come, they know what the fuck's up. You live in a what is it? St uh, stand your ground state? No, I live in. A, if I shoot you, you sue me. I go to jail. Oh, yeah, you could so. be walking out of my house with my TV, and if I shoot you, I'll probably go. I'll probably get a life sentence. Yeah, like we'll actually put that disclaimer out. We're shooting in. We're shooting this episode in whatever state crossbows are legal in. We're not even in New York right now. That's where we live. <laughs> well, we're over here in the desert. Check it out. Yeah, I like that. Ooh, I like that. Cactuses, hills, Cadillacs. Yeah, oh, not only that. Oh the oh the, the, the Lambo. Ferrari. That's a Ferrari. Oh Ferrari? Yeah. So there's a Lambo. Coach, that's you? Boy, come on now, Dennis. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> when you uh when you coach triple C pit bull. Damn. And they get and they get four world titles, they give you a reward. Damn. So who gave you that, that Ferrari? Sponsors. Okay. So Eric Alvadasin, welcome back to Menace and the Man. How always, are you doing today, awesome Coach? To have I'm good. I'm good. Yes, there, there are the glasses. Yes, that's the one. I... I'm over here with Leandro Ego, Bellator superstar, right here. Leandro, what's going on, my man? What's up, big dog? Woo! Woo! -woo. <laughs> Leandro, uh, his last fight was against Sean Bunch in Bellator. Oh, AKA. Uh, he beat Sean Bunch. Yeah, he finished him a uh, second round oh. with that flying knee, right? No, it was a, a guillotine. Yeah. But that flying knee had a, had a big uh, impact for sure, right? I don't know. Você pegou o joelho voador com contra ele? Eu acho que não. No, I think that's a different fight. It's Leandro Ego, but that's a uh... yeah. I don't know about the flying knee. Got, last time I saw him fight, I think he got flying knee. Who, Bunch? Yeah. It might have been the fight before that. Oh, okay. But yeah, Bunch. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Lee Bunch, you're right. His last fight was Sean Bunch. Sean Bunch fought again after that against oh. Kevin Lee's brother. Oh, yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. So. And that's a big win. Sean Bunch has been on the show before. Big fan of Sean Bunch. He's a Olymp. You know Sean Bunch from wrestling, I'm sure. Oh yeah, Sean Butch, we're boys. We uh, Sean Butch has actually came down to Natal, Brazil, at the Pitbull Brothers to help out. Um, right, he said that. The uh, Tricky Pitbull versus Michael Chandler. Him and Henry used to be roommates. What's that? Sean Bunch and Henry used to be roommates. Yeah. At the OTC. Yeah. At the OTC, and then uh, I think he went out to Ohio State. This yeah. Is your segue. In 2012, and they lived. Uh, I keep. So Eric, what do you think about Yo. the what do you think about the Olympics being postponed? How crazy is this shit? I mean, it's crazy because I think the I don't think this is as big as the coronavirus 
isn't as big as the scare. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the precaution. They're, they're as big as the before. precaution. They got to take that precaution, yeah, I guess. Like, man, shit, it's got a weak, it's a weak virus, you know, can't withstand 80 degrees. She got a good immune system. If you're young, you're not going to, you might have mild symptoms. I mean, I don't think, I don't feel like they have to shut everything down. I got a couple of friends, their businesses are shutting down already after, the, after this month of March. So, what? Oh. UFC still training. <laughs> oh, well, we're in you New know, York. Got the fight's still going on. We're training for Triple C. That's actually where well, I'm training Triple C for Jose Aldo. That's why Leandro's here. Oh, okay. My man. Oh, so Leandro is acting like Jose Aldo for a few weeks. He's playing that role. He's the better version of Jose Aldo. Okay, uh, okay. Actually, the story is, you know, uh, Leandro um, uh, was on looking for a fight with Dana White right. a few years ago, like three, four years ago. And Dana White watched him fight, and he won the LFA, RFA world title. And he came up to me, and he said, hey, that guy looks just like Jose Aldo. Uh, he fights just like him. So as soon as Henry said he wanted to fight Aldo, and Dana White gave it the go-ahead, I called up Leandro. And Leandro was supposed to be fighting Connecticut two weeks ago. The car that got canceled, that yeah. And then uh, he stayed in the U.S., and and he came over here to prepare for Aldo. So we've been here, uh, even during this quarantine, we've been preparing for Jose Aldo. They paid him, though, right? Bellator paid him for that. Bellator paid Leandro, yep. Shout out to and, Bellator. Uh, show and win. Yeah, oh, I know. Wow. They, they took care of the wow, fighters. They, they took the right care thing, of, huh? Yeah, they took care of everybody. Damn. Yeah, that was interesting. So, yeah, we're over here... Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know that. Uh, what do you? What is you guys? What do you guys think of what's going to happen with the UFC? At least two forty nine. Henry's supposed to be two fifty, but if two forty nine doesn't go off, well, we just had Volkanovski on, who we actually should have went there. How him and Henry have been having a lot of back and forth as well. But we were talking to him. It's going to be for the time being fighting. Like, do you see what Chael did yesterday? On uh, underground the, submission on underground, SG. yeah, that's what it's gonna be. It. It's gonna what be was what no they, fans, no fans, and only the timekeeper was in a different room. The producer was in a truck outside. Chael doing the commentary was in a different room, and they just had the referee, two fighters, and like one official, one outside official inside the actual room. Wow. Yeah. That kind of takes the, the uh, kind of, t I don't know. It you takes know, a lot Henry out of it. Had mentioned it. Henry was like, come I kind of like, he likes the crowd. Yeah. And you like the, you like to hear the crowd, whether they're booing or, you know, you could use it for motivation, at least from, from what Henry was telling me. He was like, he likes the crowd. So, so, so you, know. you know, the guys that. The, the gym heroes that do better in training than they do in like when the when the lights are on when the lights are on I think like guys like that will even do better with this whole scenario you know what I mean yeah 100%. wow that you get you got a because I remember I fought Jimmy Rivera in a fucking arena and nobody was, it was just Dana White Mayhem Miller and, and Michael Bisping and you know some cut men and shit like that and just all the other people trying out. And it almost felt like training. You know what I mean? It, it, like I think I think people will fucking even go for more shit because they're just they're not they're under the pressure. Yeah, that I think crazy it definitely takes pressure. away some of pressure. Yeah. Wow. You know what? I, I haven't thought about it that way, but I I see your point. And I, oh shit! You convinced me. I know a lot of fighters that are like that. That are better without wedge you know. buds. Better. Yeah. Uh. You can hear your corners like there's, fucking. And then there's guys that are the opposite. Yes. How does it affect them? The guys that get their ass kicked in practice, and then right during the show, when there's when the lights come on, they're uh, 100, 180 degrees different. Yeah, like I think it would benefit Tony Ferguson to have a fucking stadium packed out. Yeah, yeah. Well, wh which one is Henry Cejudo? Is Henry Cejudo a practice guy or he's a gamer? He's definitely oh. a gamer, but I think he does and, the right uh, thing. He, he, He's definitely a gamer, but he wins in practice he too. He likes to entertain. Well, he did it in wrestling. 
you know, there was never 25,000, right, 80,000 right, right. people, millions of people watching when he wrestled. So he's kind of already showed he could do it without a crowd. But he's saying he li- he likes it with with the crowd there. Yeah. He likes to get the, the, the fans involved. He's a man of the people. He's a king of the people. He's the king of cringe. <laughs> the people's champ. The people's champ. Yes, I'm a big. Uh, that's one of those things. Like even when Colby was doing it, I've I've told Menace I love it. The what what Henry does, I'm a huge fan of. I love the cringe. I love the putting themselves out there. Like people, uh, I remember we had Bobby Green on, and Bobby Green said what he does, the breathing is mad corny. I love that when he looks in the camera and starts fucking. <laughs> I think that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, that yeah, that's him. <laughs> he didn't get that from somebody else. That's his own. So now, when he Brandon does all this shit, and you're standing next to him, are you like, "What the fuck is this guy doing?" Or at this point, you're just like, "All right, that's Henry. I'm, no, I'm I, into it." I, no, I'm like, I'm like, I created a fucking monster. <laughs> yeah. No, I go. It took years. I used to fight with Henry over that. He I'm used like, to be a little you bit like amplify yourself. You got to get out there, show him your true, your true self. Quit holding back. I've told this story before, but and Dennis could probably relate. In wrestling, you don't got the shit talking. Yeah, because it's like you're competing five times in one day on a weekend. Right. Like you gotta talk gonna, shit to got, everybody. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Uh, maybe now you can't get on a tweet, but there was no shit talking back when. Uh, and when you're competing in wrestling and then it's every week, yeah. there's no time to build it up. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's real. It's a real traditional sport where there's really not a lot of shit talking involved. You shake hands before you shake hands after, um, the coaches don't let you talk shit to each other. It's kind of like, it's just much different. But nowadays, uh, I told him, I was like, you gotta, you gotta be more entertaining. I go, so what happened was when he was a wrestler, he never got the shit talk because, because of that reason. But in 2008, he won the Olympics, right? So there's no trolls when you win the Olympics in wrestling. Right. No, you're not going to have trolls. Hey, you suck. Yeah, you didn't deserve you, to win. Won the Olympics, yeah. And he was the only one that won the Olympics. However, as soon as he got an MMA, it's about four to five years later, automatically 50% hate him. Well, for those first four to five years before that, he's doing seminars and he's being speaking engagements where he has no trolls. It's a hundred percent fans. You go, you jump into MMA, fifty percent hate you. So he pulls back on being himself. You know, he uh, he's thinking once I become champion, then I can become myself. Well, he loses to Demetrius and he gets more haters because now he's the Olympic champion that that got beat in the first round. So he even shuts. He becomes more recluse, uh, thinking that when I beat Demetrius, then everything's going to be better. I'm not going to have trolls. I could be myself. He goes out there, he beats Demetrius, nothing changes. Probably even more haters saying that it was a fluke. So then it was like, I think it became when he beat, really as he started getting close to fighting TJ, he's just like, you know what? Fuck it. I beat, T- I beat Demetrius, still I got more haters. He's like, I can't, anything I do, I can't please everybody like yeah. like he's wanting to do. So then he just became himself and started thinking, I don't care what people think of me. And that's kind of like how the cringe got so cringy. <laughs> oh, 100%. And even something that, so where he is the king of cringe, where Henry Cejudo always holds the place, like in my heart, if you will, was that night when he beat Dillashaw. And you were there. I remember seeing Eric Albarrison. It was actually the first time, like, you were probably a couple drinks in i was wasted and I, first time i met you and it was his after party do you remember this where was his after party at marquee yeah and you remember like everyone crowded around we talked to henry about this when we had him on everyone crowded around and he gave a toast or someone gave a toast to him and yeah, then he started I got that video Oh, send me that video cuz remember he started talking or you might have stopped the video after he started talking about Dennis but he toasted his career and what he did. And then he was like, yo, but everybody, I want you guys to stop right now and give it up for Dennis Bermudez. And he toasted Dennis at that moment and was like, yo, an amazing career. 
everything Dennis did and blah, blah, blah. Like, he took the spotlight off himself in that moment and passed it to Dennis. And I was like, man. Yeah. At his own party, I was like, thanks, dude. <laughs> yeah, yo. We- <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Hold on. I'm pretty sure I got that video. Yo, I would love to have that video. I that video. Because then I, I never stopped it because then I spoke after, but I was like cursing up a storm. <laughs> but, uh, I was like, we fucking did it. You mo-. Anyway. Uh, so, no, I, I, I saw that video recently within the last couple months. Oh, my God. Eric, so hit, I have that video. I'll send, send me that you. video. That video is amazing because I remember being like, yo, we all were toasting Henry. And then Henry went, yo, everybody just Dennis Bermudez. And I remember being like, what the Was fuck? <laughs> Did Henry just? <laughs> no, he yeah, Leandro wasn't there. That was TJ. We were there. We did the one. He was here for Marlon Marias. But that gave me that thing of like, yo, Henry's a real motherfucker. He's a good dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For like, sure. Oh, like past the king of cringe. Yeah, he's, he's the man, Henry Cejudo. I'm a big, I've always been a big Henry Cejudo fan. I know Menace is a big fan of him. We're also big Eric Albaracine fans. So before we let you go, something I saw recently, you know when you get like that random cue of a video you should watch? And it's something I've already seen, but you fucking trained Batista? Yeah, Dave Batista. Yeah, like that fight came up in my queue and I watched it and I saw you in his corner. I was like, oh shit, he's got the, cha- the fucking trainer of trainers in his corner. He only did one fight, right? A- one yeah, fight, yeah. That, that, that whole situation was so crazy because he had never really trained before other than being a bodybuilder and, and, and WWE, but it's much different. But he was yeah. 44 and it, it was so, damn, it was so much harder. We didn't know how to, how do you push a 44 year old that's never done this before? So it was really tough. We were fighting a guy named Rashid Evans. We fly to Rhode Island. We arrive in Rhode Island where the fight was and Rashid Evans was arrested. Yeah. So we're like, we don't have a fight. So they get this other guy who has over like 45 fights. Yeah, he's that's like what I was going to say. 30 pounds. And like our guy was zero and zero, Batista. And he fought a guy that had uh, Damn. over 45 fights, had fought Tim uh, the Maniac. And he was and like 20 and 20. Experience. He was like 20 and 22 or something like that. He was game yeah. as fuck. Yeah. And Batista still took that fight. Yes. But then I remember just I watched it and it was a young Eric Albara scene. It was like a, a little less swag, a little less, you know, probably the same swag. You just didn't show it on video. <laughs> but we <laughs> true, true. We're I saw to, you in his corner. Then after the game up, we're over here on a new level. Oh, yeah. I saw you in his corner. Then after the fight, he thanked you. And I was like, oh, shit. I didn't realize Batista trained with Eric Albara scene. Man, you know what was crazy? What I remember oh, now. I, remember, I didn't know he trained at all. <laughs> no, he's like a brown. He might be a brown this. belt. He's he's legit, the Batista. He might be. A, he's definitely a purple belt. He might be a brown belt by now. I think. Yeah. I th- back then he was. Yeah, he loves jujitsu. He's he's doing. Well, he blew up after that. He really blew up after that because then he went on. Uh, he did it in concurrent with the debut of the man with the iron fist. Yeah. And then after that, he got into Spectre with James Bond. And, you know, he's, he's blown up. It's awesome to see, he's see going, how well he's done. Yeah, he's going the, the rock route. Well, now he's Drax, so he's fucking huge. Yeah. In the event, uh, what are they, Guardians Marvel. of the Galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. He's a yeah, superstar. And, they, and then he was with the Avengers, late the last one. So what's the deal? Le- Leandro only speaks Portuguese, right? Right. Right, but Leandro's here. He's looking just like Jose Aldo, so we're ready, man. You know, we're over here. It's good that he came because we're still in, you know, uh, Pitbull Brothers versus SBG. We're, we're, we got that rivalry going on. We're going after Conor McGregor's team, and uh, one by one, we're taking out their soldiers. So we had Patricio taking out Pedro Garvalho, but that fight got canceled the day of the fight. He's going looking to fight James Gallagher over in Ireland. Uh, you got some, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then you got a uh, Patricky Pit Bull is main eventing against Peter Squealy. Wait, Peter McQueely? What is Peter Queely? I think his name is yeah, Peter Queely. Peter Queely, and uh, those guys, they, them guys were going at it at the press conference for Bellator, but uh, love it. You know, the coronavirus is kind of slowing everything down, but... Hate it. 
Yeah. We'll be able to stop the virus, but they ain't gonna be able to stop the Pitbull brothers. Yeah. We're coming to uh, we're coming to conquer Ireland's SVG. We're oh. gonna burn the ships and take the castle once we arrive. They're not gonna be able to stop the Al Badassin trained fighters. Period. No. Period. Captain, Captain America's army. I like that. I got the zombie. I got the eraser. I got Leandro Ego, we got Patricky Pitbull, we got Arya Stark, we got Patricia Pitbull, and, and of course we got uh, Triple C. So now, how many languages do you speak? How are you communicating with the Korean zombie? Uh, in Korean. You, you speak Korean too? I learned a little bit for, for what we had to in planned in, um, for the fight. Okay. So Not fluent. Not yet. I'm not. I'm not fluent. I'm. I'm enough to get get your phone number and ask you out for a drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but even that. Let's get. Let's touch base later on this week. Send me that video and let's get Leandro on next week, and you be our translator. How's that sound? Um, semantic bang. Much less soon. Podcast. One podcast with me. Okay. It's better. Yeah, a, a, a real quick story. This, this, this was, I was at the, the BMF fight with this jacket, and there was the Trump supporters were there because Trump came, yeah. and they tried to rip this jacket to pieces. <laughs> so I got a lot of holes in them. I'm trying to get I got to fix. Just, yeah, it's got some, you know, a little stitch going. They got They tried to rip it off me. They were, uh, Hang on. They that's, if someone tries to rip my jacket, I, that's a fist fight. I'm punching them in the care. face. I don't care. Not not when there's a bunch of... Uh, don't care. Fifty-year-old uh, women with with uh, with uh, protesting. Yeah, no, it wasn't the right. To, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I just tried. To well, hang on. I would never hit a woman, but I'd foot sweep the shit out of one. Well, we were, we were late to the fight, so I was in a rush. Uh, okay. As soon as we get off, I'm gonna text Henry. Yo, you gotta buy Eric a new coat, a new <laughs> mink. <laughs> Eric needs a new uh, mink. Hey, but he did get a new truck. I haven't liftedtrucks.com gave him a big ass truck. I don't know if you guys saw it. I've seen that in your stories. I've Lifted seen that too. shit. It's like seven feet high. Damn. Yeah, you, you guys. got to jump out of it. <laughs> I stay following. You guys stay training. Yes. You guys are running hills and social distancing out in the mountains and whatnot. That's what's You're up. You're on top of it. This virus ain't getting us. We're bio, bio X men. <laughs> All right, Leandro, we'll definitely get you on soon. Eric, you're the man. Thank you for jumping on the show. Thank you. And we'll Thank talk you. to you soon, my brother. All right, gents. Catch you guys. Stay Pit safe. Bull Brothers versus SVG. Clean your Stay ass too. and clean your hands. Make sure you guys desanitize UFC after this. 250. Triple C. Send me that video, brother. I'll talk to you soon. I will. I will. Good shit. He looks amazing. Oh, my God. Shut off the camera. Ha, ha, ha.